Welcome back to Jatai Academy. Today we're going to be doing a study on internal texture. There's two different ways of texture, external, internal. Today we're going to study internal. So let's get started. So we're going to start out with our one leg bob. We got a little bit of graduation in the back, but it's all pretty solid. The edges are nice and solid. It might have a little texture in the tips, but very, very little. So this is going to be our solid shape. So by going through and comparing how to internally texture and what effects that that's going to have on the shape, we're going to go through and break this down into different sections. So we're going to start by going with some internal texturing underneath. Then we're going to compare what the shape looks like. Then we're going to go with some internal texture on our in-between layer. And then we're going to go with some texture all over so we can see how the shape changes, how the movement changes, and if that makes any kind of difference in the overall aesthetic of the shape and the silhouette. I'm going to go through on damp hair because a razor slides better through damp hair and you have less risk of damaging it. I'm going to go through with my plie, my feather plie, and this is a no guard razor. So I'm going to hold it real deep, get good control over it. Now I'm going to tilt my head. Come on, baby, tilt for me. If I want to create some internal texture, there's a couple of different ways I can do it. One way is I can just comb the section out and with my razor, just lay it broad stroke across the entire section and fillet, like I'm filleting a fish, so that I can remove some weight. But that doesn't create any kind of movement. I specifically want to work and see how channeling the hair affects the shape, not just filleting it, because all filleting is going to do is bevel the shape. So I'm going to start right in the middle, put my razor in, angle it at whatever angle I think, and then I'll wiggle it so I make sure I am cutting, and then I'll just channel all the way down to my tips of my fingers, and I start to curl my fingers out of the way as I go through and do each section. And that's going to create, as you can see, channel, 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 channel. So that's going to force the hair to separate into pieces. I usually don't want to do this more than about half the length. So from where it's about halfway down to the tip. Follow Jatai Feather on your favorite social media platform. If I go shorter, I run the risk of it getting really pokey. So about halfway to the tip, curl my fingers out of the way, and I've started to create my internal texture. Put my blade out of the way, and then let's move on to the next section. I'm gonna go through and spray this, so I keep all the hair nice and damp. Now as I go to razor my second section, I wanna section out my second section and keep it separated from my original section, from my beginning section. That way, I can only texturize the hair that's in my hand. If I pick up the entire section, and I'm using a guide, so to speak, I'll run the chance of texturizing this again. So I'll go through, open my razor, elbow up out of the way, about halfway, channel that all the way down and through. The closer the gaps are, the more hair that I'm gonna remove. The further away the gaps are, the less hair I'm gonna remove and the more solid my shape is gonna be. Okay, here's the third part of my last section. I'm gonna separate that from the underneath sections that I already texturized. Keep this very organized and clean. Separate. Go right and through down to my fingertips. Pull my fingers out of the way and channel that through. Now I can tell already um, that my blade is getting a little dull. So the way I'm going to change my blade is I have my plie blades, my razor right here on this little lip. I'm going to use that to force the blade up and out so that I can grab it. Now on the bottom, I have a little flap. Slide the blade in. Close the flap. Now here I'll push this out. Grab that. And this will go right in here. Boom. 
new blade, easy. So now we've texturized section number one, the flat and the nape. So let's blow it dry and compare it to our previous, which had no texture to it at all. So we've got everything blown dry. We've got um, our first level of texturizing, of channeling, and it doesn't make a huge difference in the overall shape, but it certainly changes how much movement that we're having from the nape area alone, because usually the nape area tends to be the stiffest area. So even just doing that one section, you can already see how much more movement that that channeling is gonna give us just from doing underneath. Okay, now we've taken our next section, which is from the recession, center of the recession, straight back to the drop crown, which is the bump between where the crown and the occipital bone lies. I took half of that, so I don't work with too much hair at one time. Then I'll go through and do the same thing. I'm gonna take section out, the section that I'm cutting only, not including previous hair that I've cut, go through, channel that down to my fingertips, pull that down, take that out. You can see gap, gap, gap. Then I'll just continue that on until I run out of hair. Just following this around the front. Now, I wanna be mindful of how thick the hair is. The thicker the hair is, the more channeling that I can get away with. The thinner the hair is, obviously I wanna be more judicious in my application of my channeling. And also I wanna be mindful of when I get around the front, I wanna make sure I still have a solid piece around the front for this particular haircut. I'll take my next section, because I split that in half, and pin that out of the way. Comb this clean from the root out. Take my razor about halfway, all the way down to the very tips. Give us a thumbs up, click subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified of future Detai content. Okay, so now we've finished our second tier of channel texturizing. So let's blow this dry and compare it to the previous two. Second level is done. You can see certainly the texture now is starting to pop through, but we still have a nice solid shape through here. And it hasn't really changed the overall shape. It's probably beveled the, the, the line and give it a little bit more of an appearance of graduation. The biggest difference that I can see is that when I run my fingers through it, now you start to see separation internally, whereas before you only saw separation on the very tips. Now we're gonna go through and do our last two sections, which is the entire top third of the head, and I'm gonna do the same methodology I was doing before. Go through, channel that down through as evenly and as consistently as I can. Trying not to take too large of a section to overload my razor with hair. I wanna be able to control it and then that way I can evenly remove the same amount of hair with every section and create the same amount of texture. All right, so now we've finished that. Let's go through and blow it dry and compare all of our results. brush through, oh, now you can really see the texture in it and the shape really coming to life and having quite a bit more movement to it than it had before. Even though the shape is the same, the internal texture of it is greatly increased. So let's compare the photos of, of each step of the way. So the first was tier one, which is texturizing in the nape. So let's look at that compared to tier two, which was 
internally, and then three where it covers the entirety of the head. We got texture in the whole head. And you can certainly see that the more texture that we add to it, the more separation that we're getting throughout, the more movement that we're gonna have, but also the less solid the shape is gonna be. So for someone that has thinner, finer hair, maybe you don't wanna do every tier. Maybe you just wanna do underneath and a little bit of the second. For someone with a lot of hair, maybe you wanna do all of it. I think that was a pretty good study on how internal texture and tears can really change your shape and create more movement. Let us know what you'd like to see in the future. Also check out the Jatai Academy. There's all kinds of great information on there to make you a better hairstylist and barber. And uh, we will see you next time. Thank you so much for checking it out.